This is the Pickle Grill 398, the smallest of the fire pits from Pickle Grill. If you're interested in seeing this one in action, keep watching. So once again, this is the Pickle Grill 398. And Bruno did send this to me so that I could share it with you. Now, uh, there's a unique status for this stove, which I'll, I'll explain in a minute. But uh, in previous videos, I had mentioned that uh, I had three grills or three fire pits, sorry, from Pico Grill to share with you. And that the last one I would be sharing with you is the largest, the 760, which is a huge stove. Uh, I haven't done that yet. That's yet to come. But in conversations with Bruno, the owner of the company, he did agree to send me the smallest one, which I had not had before this. And the reason why I, he hadn't sent it to me before is because Bruno is seriously considering taking this one out of production. Uh, he feels that this one is so close in size to the other one, which it's the 468. I'll have to put the, the name of it on the screen. It eludes me right now. He feels that it is so close in size that this one doesn't really really offer any advantages from the next one up. Well, I don't know, Bruno. Um, so far, and now I haven't had a fire in it. It is brand new. I haven't uh, set it up. Today will be the first burn in it. But when I compared it in size against the next one up, uh, there are some distinct differences. This one is simpler in many ways and doesn't have quite the versatility of the next size up. But there's something about the shape and size of this one, although not a lot smaller, just the shape and size tells me that I think I'm going to like how this one performs a lot. And I will put a picture um, on the screen right now, somewhere, showing you these two these two uh, stoves or these two fire pits side by side. I chose not to bring the two of them out today, just the one that I'm going to burn in. So I guess the only thing left to do now is to get a fire built in it. And uh, But first, I have to put it together so you can see how it goes together. So I put the stove back in the package that it came with so I can uh, give you an idea what it looks like all packed down. As you can see, small, goes in my backpack against my back uh, very nicely, very thin, lightweight. Of course, I'm going to give you all the uh, description, all the specifications for this, and I'll put it all in the video description below. But everything you're looking at right here comes in at one pound, 6.3 ounces, or 632 grams. So let me get it out and we'll set it up and then I'll give you the rest of the specifications. Starts with the frame, just like the frames on the other ones. This way, yep. Then the fire grate. Folds open like this. And there are notches on a four, well, two on each side, of course. They lock into the frame itself like that. There we go, that's, yep, that's the way it should be. All right, that's it, that's the stove assembled. And you can see I'm doing it with my uh, fingerless gloves on on a cold day, so it's not as if it's especially hard to assemble in the cold, actually it's very easy to assemble. Uh, yeah, that's it. And the thing I like about this one over the slightly larger stove so far, I mean, I will put the pictures, as I mentioned, I will put pictures of both stoves side by side, but I kind of like this one because it's deeper in here than the other one is. Uh, we'll see in a moment what kind of performance it gives me. I don't expect it'll have any negative impact, but not, my feeling is, is that you have more concentration of heat in the center, which will provide a little bit more protection, maybe. All right, let me get out the grates. This is the grate that you get with it, or grill, grate, whatever you want. And there are two of the skewers sized to fit the stove. You can use either the skewers or the grate, or a skewer and a grate. Hard pressed to put all three on at the same time. It's not quite stable enough, but you can put at least any two of the three on at the same time. It works well. I haven't used it yet. Yeah, I don't think that'll work. That's fine. That's not what it's intended for anyway. And the skewers, as you know from my other videos, they can be used to suspend a pot with, but they can also be used for putting sausages or meat on, just like a barbecue skewer. All right, let's give me a, give you a full or a few more specifications for it. So just what you're looking at here, which is just the frame and the grill itself, comes in at 12.9 ounces or 366 grams. That's light, that is very light. 
The grill, the optional grill, comes in at 4.8 ounces or 131 grams. The skewers, uh, two of them, are 2.8 ounces or 82 grams. And the bag itself comes in at 1.87 ounces or 53 grams. So, let's see. Fold it out the way it is. We have 15 inches long, 9.84 inches wide, 9.84. 84 inches high to the top up here. I'll put the metrics in the video description so that I don't have to repeat myself now. That's all there is to this. It's just that simple, a small fire pit. So what I'll do now, of course, is I'll get it set up in the larger stone fire pit I have, and I'm doing that for wind protection, and that's the only reason. I'll get a fire going in it. I will be making lunch on top of this today, but that'll come out under a separate video, which I can link to it. This is all about getting this out and showing it to you and talk and showing its performance. So let's do that now. All right, it did take me a few minutes to collect up what I needed to make this fire. So I have my birch bark already in the fire pit. Can make sure it's nice and level here. Uh, that should work. Okay, and uh, I have some sticks to go, so I'll Put them on as I get started here. Let's light this up using the outdoors, uh, survive outdoors longer plasma lighter to light up my birch bark. Been testing this most of the winter. There we go. Put the other birch bark on top. I think that'll work there. Put my smallest sticks right on. This is nice, you know, you use it just like you would a uh, fire on the ground, but it's elevated off of the ground. The irony here, of course, is I'm using a fire pit inside a fire pit, but, uh, and that was necessary. Well, not necessary. I've just decided to use it for wind protection because I mentioned it was cold. Did I also mention it was windy? All right, come on, catch. I know it looks like it's going well, but the truth is right now that's mostly birch bark and my small stuff is elevated off of the birch bark. It does look like it's catching, but uh, until I see some of that stuff dropping into the middle, I'm not happy that it's sustainable, but it looks like it may be starting to happen now. A pile of sticks here. Just keep adding them on. Get the fire going with small pines, spruce, and then once I have some heavy flame going, I'll start adding the fuel on, or big flames, not heavy flame. Adding the fuel on because even if it is slightly damp, at least that way it should start to dry out. I'm really enjoying this uh, Pico grill. What have I got that I can start throwing on this bigger wood? That's not very good. I can see it's a little unsteady. I think what I'll do is put a piece of wood under the back leg there to steady it up some. There, I think that's better. Oh, I don't know about this fuel. <laughs> I gotta get it on though to dry it out. Yikes. This may be a short-lived fire. Add in some of the uh, pines as well. Keep the fire going while it dries out the uh, larger stuff. Wow, okay. Well, I can hear it drafting well, and everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. I guess now all I can do is wait a few minutes and see that the fire really does take on and become sustainable, and that the fuel itself really does start to uh, engage well with the fire, and then I'll be able to get my lunch on. This is working out really well. This pan, or this uh, fire pit, can establish a good hot fire quickly. I don't know if you can see down inside the coals that are forming underneath. Now, the pieces of wood that I'm putting on, uh, they are, I don't know, 14 inches long. They're two and a half inch logs that have been split, and they're just, some of them are quarter, but most of them are they're just in half. So they make good, long lasting 
fuel. They are oak and maple, mostly maple here. So they make good long lasting roasting fuel. But uh, the problem I may have here is that by the time they're ready to collapse into the center, there may be too much of a hollow inside of the flame. So to keep the fire going in the center, got all kinds of smaller ones to put in. I flipped one of my patties over just to, as a test to see where it was. You can see the golden color. Look, look at, look at that. That's what you're looking for. This Pico grill is, is doing ideal for, for the type of cooking that I'm using here. The hardwood that I'm putting in, I think it was just a couple pieces of oak on top of the maple. They're burning slowly, but they're providing me a nice even heat. And that's the whole trick with cooking with fire is don't try and cook over a lot of flame. You want to cook over coals. In order to get to coals, you have to go through the stage of flame, use some bigger wood to because it'll burn more slowly. If you use hardwood, it'll last a little longer. Thought I'd give you one more look at the Pico Grill 398 as the fire starts to die down. So I just cooked a wonderful lunch on top of this uh, fire pit. Okay, so full disclosure, I think this may be my favorite of all the fire pits that I've used from Pico Grill so far. It's the simplest, it's the smallest, but uh, there's something about the design that just seems to work so well. It may be the deeper dish or deeper fire grate but you can see how well I've just got some beautiful coals there for grilling. As I mentioned, I just finished cooking my lunch over it. The like, only thing left to do now, well, maybe I'll just put a pot on and have some coffee. What do you think? That's probably a good idea. And then when the fire has finally died out, then I'll come back and uh, share a few closing thoughts with you. All right, so I let the fire die down till it was just coals. And uh, then I dumped the Pico grill over and I've uh, covered up the coals with some snow and I'm just waiting to make sure that they go out before I, I move on. But I wanted to share this with you. This is how it turned out. Dirty, yes, damaged, not in the least. And I had one hot fire going in this. Uh, you know, there's just something I, I like about this fire pit. This, it's just the size of it and the depth of it and the simplicity of it. It's, uh, yeah, it worked out really well. There's the grill. I did all my cooking over it. There's a little bit of an inward bow to it. I don't believe was there before. It's hard to tell. But uh, if it looks like it's going to bow and it, you know, a, a fire grate like this is not meant for cooking over high flame. I just turn it over and let it bow the other way. All right, let's take this apart. That's how simple it comes apart, right? Fold it. Now you can see there is a, a bit of a warp. I call it the set because it, uh, it just makes it easier to put together next time and it in no way makes it hard to put, to put away. And the nice thing, the same thing with all the Pico Grill fire pits is there is my dirty grate inside of it. Put that away in the package. And the only other piece is the frame and it just literally folds together like that and that can go inside the package. Oh. Done. There we are. All put away. Yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, early on, this is the smallest of the four fire pits from Pico Grill. And then there are the two smaller wood burning stoves for hikers. And this is the one that Bruno, the owner of the company, is considering dropping from his line for sale. Uh, I, can, I can understand, you know, you have to make some decisions somewhere. If you're looking at manufacturing and sales and costs, if you have too many models and the models don't have enough difference between them, then uh, the market share or the selling on each of them is probably... Uh, not great enough to make it uh, a sustainable thing. But uh, I don't know. I, I will have to compare this against the next one up, both of them operating at the same times, as I mentioned, third time now. I'll put a picture so you can see what the two of them look like. But I really like this grill. Now, if it's not a lot different than the next one up, then I can understand why Bruno wants to uh, drop it from his line. But uh, let me let Bruno know in the comments that Bruno, what you think. Bruno, no, what you think about this stove. Do you like the simplicity of it? Do you like 
like the slightly smaller size? It is, is it something that you would like to see him continue to offer for sale? If it is, then he needs to know that before he makes the decision to stop making them. Um, yeah, I like it. And as with all the other Pico Grills, I'll be putting the, low, the proper websites to purchase them from. This one, I think, is the one that gets copied most often out of China, and which is unfortunate. Sometimes it's unbranded. Sometimes they actually name it Pico Grill, and of course it's not. So if it's not from one of the links that I put in the video description, it's not from Pico Grill. It's just that simple. Um, I have mentioned before that Bruno would love to have a North American distributor. If you are one or you know of one that may be interested in taking a look at these, I think it's well worth someone's while to uh, talk with Bruno and see what you could come up with. But uh, yeah, so there is one more grill, the Pico Grill 760. <laughs> I could put two of these side by side in it. That's how big it is. It's huge. And uh, I... If I didn't have this one, that's the one I would have brought out today. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll have to, I have to come up with just the right meal because you can do so many things at once on top of that one. It's just that big. Okay, that's all I have. Comments in the comment section below. Questions in the comment section below. All the information in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.